free body diagrams, part one of two. Our goal for this video, part one, is to cover some details about drawing free body diagrams and just to go over what a free body diagram is. In the next video, the second part, we'll see how free body diagrams are used to help us apply Newton's second law. Okay, so what is a free body diagram? Well, to help us understand why something moves the way it does, or why it remains at rest, if it remains at rest, it's helpful to draw a free body diagram. That's a diagram that shows all the forces acting on an object. Not applied by the object, but applied to the object. So if you're drawing the free body diagram of an apple, you want to draw the force applied by other things to that apple. You don't want to include the force applied by the apple on other things. And a free body diagram also helps us when we apply Newton's second law, when we add forces as vectors. So what does Newton's second law say? The sum of all the forces added up as vectors equals ma. So it's really helpful to have a diagram, the free body diagram, to look at to tell us what are all the forces acting on the object and which way do they go, and that can help us add them as vectors. So two things to think about when you're drawing a free body diagram. So as you draw all your various forces, you want to think about what applies each of those forces that you drew. If there's a force you draw and you can't come up with the object applying that force, then maybe that force doesn't really exist. Secondly, when you're finished with your picture, is the overall free body diagram consistent with the motion and Newton's laws of motion? So for instance, if the object is at rest, then Newton's laws say the net force should be zero, the forces should balance. Is that what is shown on your picture? It should be. If the motion is that the object is accelerating in a particular direction, then Newton's laws say we need a net force in that particular direction does your free body diagram show a net force in that direction? It should. Okay, so this is the example we're going to do. We have two boxes, one sitting on top of the other one, and you're actually going to lift the boxes up, and you're going to hold them with your hands underneath box number two. So you're supporting the bottom box. You're not actually touching the top box. But everything's at rest. In video two, we'll talk about what happens when things accelerate, Maybe if you get in an elevator and the elevator is accelerating, what happens? But for now, we'll just focus on everything remaining at rest. So we're going to draw three free body diagrams, one for box one, another for box number two, and then we'll draw a free body diagram for the two box system. See how that works. Okay, so you want to think about which forces act on box number one. What is box one interacting with when you draw a free body diagram, the free body diagram for box one? So clearly, we're doing this at the surface of the Earth, so box 1 is interacting with the Earth. This is a gravitational interaction. We'll label that as M1g with a vector directed down. It's a downward directed force. Mass of object 1, box 1, times the gravitational field strength of the Earth. Box 1 is also interacting with box number 2, so box number 2 applies an upward normal force on box number 1. Should we also include a normal force applied by you on box number one. Well, let's think about these. So we definitely have that interaction, the Earth box one interaction. We definitely have the box two on box one interaction. And you are not in contact with box number one, so there can be no such force applied by you on number one. We only have the other two. So put those together into the full free body diagram box one. And we'll just step back and think about that. One, have we accounted for all the interactions? Yes, it's interacting with the Earth, we got that. It's interacting with box two, we got that. It's not interacting with anything else. Secondly, what's the box doing? It's staying at rest. The forces should balance. That's what our picture shows, balanced forces. Okay, on to box two. So box two also interacts with the Earth. There's a downward force of gravity, M2g. Box two is interacting with you. You've got your hands supporting box two from the bottom, you're, pull, you're uh, applying an upward normal force on box number two. What else is box two interacting with? Well, clearly it's interacting with box number one. And if box two applies an upward normal force to box one, then box one applies an equal and opposite downward normal force to box number two. Well, couldn't we just label that as an M1g force? Let's go over all those. We like that interaction, interacting with the earth, interacting with you, interacting with the other box. We're not going to label it this way. Okay, two good reasons why not. One, 
M1g is an interaction, a gravitational interaction between box one and the Earth. It does not belong on box two's free body diagram. It's applied to box one. Uh, yes. The other thing is, M1g and Fn one on two are sometimes equal in magnitude and sometimes not equal in magnitude if the boxes are accelerating, for instance. Okay, so we really want to label it as Fn one on two. Otherwise, in some cases, we'll get it numerically wrong. Okay, so that is the full free body diagram we draw for box number two. Again, it shows no net force. All the force is balanced. That's consistent with the box remaining at rest. Okay, on to the two box system. Okay, if you treat the two objects as one system, then you can say, what's interacting with that two box system from outside the system? The Earth, m1 plus m2, all multiplied by g, and you, you are exerting that upward force on box number two, but that's part of the two box system. And that is it. Okay, so you put those together, that's the full free body diagram. Again, this shows no net force acting on the system, also consistent with the system remaining at rest. Okay, so let's sort of dissect that picture a little bit more. So we can imagine building that free body diagram up as the sum of the individual box free body diagrams. Okay, so we can take box one's free body diagram, combine it with box two's free body diagram, and we should get this system free body diagram because we're including all the parts that are going into that system. So let's see if we get that. So we've got FNU on two, we've got that one, we've got M1G and M2G, over there is M1 plus M2 all multiplied by G. What about these other two? Well, we don't have to include those on the system free body diagram because they're internal forces to the system and by Newton's third law, they cancel each other out. So we generally don't include them on a system free body diagram. No, no reason to. Just include the external forces. Okay, so that's a good introduction to the free body diagrams of this two box system. We'll, we'll go on in the next video and uh, write down Newton's second law.